use all that passion, all that fire that you have inside of you in a good way. Because if you don't know how to use how you feel, it's just going to turn into violence. And that really won't accomplish anything. So can somebody read the first step? The first step is information gathering. Uh, information gathering is the way you determine the facts, the opinions for change, and the timing of pressure for the raising issue for raising the issue, and is a collective process. Yeah, that's you really do need that as a starting point because information gathering you need to know what's in the history behind the conflict. You need to learn what's happening right now in the community. But what happened when their grandfathers lived in that community that carried on to their fathers and then now it is like almost a more value that's instilled to them. You like somebody like somebody in the South, if they were black, they were taught not to bother the white man, not to go into the front of the bus, to go you separate, right? That's what their grandfathers told them. And their fathers told them to that to their son. So you need to understand why they said that, when did they say that, and how and how are they still saying that when things may have changed or when they're trying to get change. Can somebody read the second step, please? Education is a process of developing particular, particularly leaders who are knowledgeable about the issues. They are directed toward the community through all forms of media about the real issues and human consequences of the all right, and uh, education is really important because once you've gathered all that information, once you know all that, you have to spread it not only to the oppressed but to your colleagues, to the people in the highest offices. For that way, they and hopefully they do care. But if they do, they can know the issue and help change every little detail that's making things worse and worse in the community. Because if you have everything and you know there's a problem and you don't do anything to help spread the word about it raise awareness how people understand what the issues are and may not necessarily be in that community you're just as bad as the oppressors uh somebody please read the third step personal commitment you looking at your internal Yeah, personal commitment is really important because if you hit a little bump in the road, you can't just act like you caught a flat. So your your you know your organization, what you believe in, it's just gonna go away. You can't have all your work dissipate over one little thing. But personal commitment, you can't just commit to the cause, but you have to commit to yourself. You know? Like say you're on a workout plan. You have to commit to yourself, you first gotta tell yourself, you gotta promise yourself that you are gonna do whatever it takes to get to the physical form that you desire. And you gotta stick to that plan. You gotta stick to what you did, what you said you're gonna do, the diet, everything that you wrote out, you have to stick to that to reach that excellence. The same goes with the community. You have to commit to your neighbor or or yourself, especially, that you're gonna help that need. You know? Like when they come knocking, asking for food, they're not just gonna close the door right in the face because then they won't help you and your cause really won't go anywhere. So I read the four, please. Negotiation is the art of bringing together your views and those, and those of your opponents to arrive to a just conclusion or clarify the unresolved issues, at which point the conflict is formalized. Yeah, negotiation, it's one of the most important steps. That's, you know, that's the end of the story of that person's struggle. That's when you get to have everybody sit together and understand what the problems are and how they can fix those problems. Understand what they can do to make everything feel, you know, better inside the community, inside the neighborhood, everywhere. And the thing with King Nam violence negotiation, you want to have a resolution that's good for both parties. You just don't want the people that boycotted to get everything they want. And you just don't want 
the whites to go back to doing what they were doing. You want everybody to have a resolution that they feel benefits both because they won't really do anything to keep that if it's just helping one party. Can somebody read the last one, the last step? It's not six five. Oh, the fifth step. Okay. The right action. Our first one is the negotiations have broken down or failed to produce a just response to the contested issue and conditions. Yeah, direct action, that's the only step if that's not necessary, if all the other previous steps have been successfully uh, fulfilled. With direct action, you have to show the person that didn't do the negotiations in good faith that you have power, that you stand for something that's real, that you stand for something that you believe in, that your community believes in, something that everybody in your community cares about. If you don't show people that you're important, they won't listen to you. They won't negotiate again. They just you know, laugh at your face and just shut the door. And you so don't want that to happen. Can you an example of direct action? Uh, direct action is like I have a conflict with this, I have a conflict with that. And then I was trying to like talk to her, like I was trying to like talk to her on my phone. Yeah, another example would be like, uh, they weren't really listening to anybody in, in Tennessee. They, they didn't listen to anybody. And uh, Montgomery, they didn't listen to anybody. So what they do, they boycotted, they marched, they showed the elected officials that people really are fed up and they're not gonna take it anymore. All right, and now can somebody be the last step? Reconciliation. Is the mandatory closing step of a campaign when the opponents and proponents celebrate the victory and provide enjoyed leadership to implement change? Yeah, without reconciliation, everything that you worked up to is just going to slide right back down to where it began. You know, and Dr. King talked about a type of love that is unconditional. You know, uh, I have my grandma, so does my mentor, and he. I kind of use an example and I, it really spoke to me. Uh, it's called the grand, grandma's love, agape. And it's a love that you have, that you always have, no matter what. You know, if you and your friend have a fight, right? And you guys argue, but you still hug it out a week later. You know, you guys feel stronger than ever because you know that one little disagreement won't break you guys apart. That you guys are something real, that you guys understand and connect with each other. And you need that because they're just, if one party will stay angry, you know, when that generation passes on, they're just going to go back to the way it was, trying to oppress the people that they think really don't care about it anymore. The people that had it, that's used to everything so good, right? And you really don't see a lot of that anymore because there, you can find blacks that are still like 70 that still hate white people. And we just gotta learn from what Nelson Mandela did. He shared the Nobel Peace Prize with somebody who threw me in prison for close to 30 years. You know, most than, like more than all of us were alive. So if you can love your oppressor, then you really have mastered King Yanavans. You really did learn something. You really do want everybody, not just your party, you want the whole community to prevail in the name of freedom, justice, and prosper. Again, why do we take direct action? Uh, we, and we only take direct action when negotiations are made in bad faith, when the people just really don't care. When you don't, when people think that you don't have power, that you're not important. It's used to get us back to what? Negotiation, where we can peacefully resolve everything. And then negotiations ultimately bring us to reconciliation.